planet Earth, a scientist creates the ultimate machine. At last! A machine that will give him the power to journey into the mega world. With thousands of colors, 16-bit graphic technology, and 10-channel mega stereo sound. The most advanced video game system in the universe. Yes! Mega Drive from Sega. Sega. Mega Drive. Mega Drive. Mega Drive. That was one of cartridges, right? Super Mario Brothers on the NES. Yeah, Sega Mega Drive playing the Bomberman game on there. Mega Bomberman. I remember when I was about five, being staying away somewhere on holiday, and they had a Space Invaders table machine. Ah, oh, classic. And I remember my dad teaching me how to play Space Invaders in like a bar on a flat. Space on the actual table, table one as well. Yeah, those glass ones where you put your drink on the top, and and I just thought it was the best thing ever. Yeah, yeah. Sonic and. I remember Mario, I used to always go around my friend's house and she'd have it and we'd sit in there and play it for hours and hours and then her mum would be like, Daddy, Daddy, and then we'd stop and go dinner and then go back. <laughs> when I had my Atari 2600, that was my first console, so getting that out of the box at Christmas and then they, I think my parents bought me a small 14 inch TV as well, plugging that in and just whacking the games in and just centipede was just a block chasing <laughs> a block essentially, but it was genius. And just remember just being, you know, involved in a different world yeah. for a few hours as a kid. Yeah, instead yeah. of just you know, moving stuff on a TV screen. Yeah, that, that was, was it. That was enough. Just moving a block about was it. Yeah, that was amazing. Exciting stuff. My earliest gaming experience was on the old Mega Drive. I, uh, I think it was like one of the first Sonic games I used to play. I really can't remember too much of it. I must have been like three or four years old. It was all I used to really do. Jingle bells, Santa smells, Christmas really stunk. I got nothing that I like, my gifts were all just junk. Boxes full of clothes, CDs no one knows. When I wanted something for my Nintendo 64. My brother getting the um, Nintendo 64 in 19, Christmas Day 1999. And I, I remember that day so well. I remember my brother playing the original Super Smash Brothers, which was absolutely brilliant. Looks awful today. I played the Mega Drive for as long as it was out really and then I eventually got that little white PS1, the tiny one that was the kind of like the special that flipped up instead of had a disc tray. And I remember playing like some really old games on that and really enjoying it and just basically reveling in youth. Loading the games and setting up those computers took yeah, that ages. Sucked. That was crap. And those crazy, crazy colours. Yeah. And yeah. the crazy, crazy sounds that you had to endure for like half an hour or yeah. if it worked. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. you had to go back, press play on tape. Rewind the tape, plug the tape in, plug the tape player in, plug it into the computer, plug it into the telly. Spend ages between you all choosing what game you wanted to play because you knew it took that <laughs> yeah. long to load. So that took as long as actually loading it and playing it. And yeah, you're right, when it got to the end and it just crashed. Hey, you see, my Commodore 64 though, as well as having tape deck capabilities, it also had a cartridge slot. Ah. So I had cartridge games as well. I had Emily Hughes' Soccer. I remember that. Flimbo's yeah. Quest, Freddy's Crazy Circus, that was cool. Uh, Terminator 2, and I think I had something else, but they were instant. You whacked them in the ah, back and flipped see. the switch, and it was like whoop. Posh. The Game Boy Color when it first came out, and getting Pokemon Yellow with it. What color did you get? Pokemon Yellow. The green Game Boy Color, and because no one else had it, I absolutely loved it. It was a little square one. Is it the fold one? And it flipped up. Before the Game Boy Color, you remember, they released the Game Boy Pocket. It was a little pink one. That's the um, Advance, I Is think. it? No, remember that? Or maybe that was after. I can't remember. I think that was for the Game Boy Color. Normal Game Boy, and then you had the Game Boy Color, then you had the Game Boy Advance. Oh, uh. that it was like a regular rectangle one. Then you had the. It was like the SP? Yeah, mm. SP. It was a green one. Ah, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. They were really hard to find. I actually. think that was actually. Um, wasn't it like the, the logo? There's a color in the logo which Nintendo made up themselves in the word color. They made it. They made a colour? Yeah, they made up their own colour and they put it in the word colour. Do you know where it says Game Boy Colour? There's a yeah, colour in that that they made up themselves. I think they did. Yeah. What was the colours? I can't remember, like... I'm sure they were normal colours, I don't know. No, they weren't normal oh, colours. Oh, you've been on Wikipedia or something. My nan had one. Really? Yeah. Like 50, <laughs> she had one. <laughs> Atari makes the world's most popular home video games. The only Space Invaders. 
the only asteroids, the only Pac-Man, the only Missile Command, and now the only Defender. And the only way you can play any of them is on a home video system made by Atari. Yeah, I used to go to other people's houses and stuff and, and play their consoles, you know, when, you, when you're little, you go around your cousin's house or something, play a bit of Nintendo 64, a bit of Destruction Derby, yeah, Ocarina of Time. It was always your cousin, wouldn't I try and get him around to play, like, Mario Kart 64. Well, it was, yeah, I was never really, I didn't get into the Mario Kart actually until the DS, not, not properly. Mario Kart 64 is amazing. I, I wasn't disputing it, I was you know, laying down the facts. Well, since I was the little brother, I was always Luigi. Or on the NES, we played a game called Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. And uh, you know Chip and Dale, the two squirrels from Disney? Of course, I was Dale. I mean, the, not the so smart one. <laughs> there was a smart one and, and not so smart. <laughs> a dumb one. Of course, I was the second one. So yeah, being the, the little brother, you, can't, you, can't, you don't really have a choice. <laughs> Actually, it's not really just childhood, is it? I think some of the best memories have come from more recent, our, our DS nights around my house. I mean, it sounds sad. Let's just address that. He wants to know how multiplayer was. Multiplayer? Multiplayer didn't exist. No. It was like you it just was. said. Take it in turns. Have a uh, fight. Yeah. And it was, if there's more than two of you, it was either winner stays on or everyone gets one go on the computer Yeah, each. that was it. And if one person was brilliant at the game, they'd be on it for half an hour. Yeah. You went on it, you were crap. And you were over in two minutes, oh, it's your go, gone. Yeah, your go, that's it, done. Playing um, Halo. Now, there used to be this kid in school who used to play games. Um, they invited me around my house one day and we started playing Halo together. And really from there, like, we've been best friends ever since. But the thing was, you are obviously pretty good. Not, not quite as good as, as yours truly. Not quite as good? No. Whenever you write. I know you can play online now with all your friends and you can like group up and play together but I used to miss like getting 12 people around someone's crappy CRT and you'd all, you'd all take turns to play and you'd usually play like winner stays on so you'd play some like competitive game like I don't know one of the old FIFA's or an old wrestling game and the winner would stay on and you'd loop around and you'd, before you knew it, it was 5pm and you all had to go home for dinner. You said, what was he said, 50 quid to anyone that can beat me in... Didn't happen. Well, it did happen because we started, we, we beat you for like half of it and then you started crying. Actually went into a corner of my room and started crying because we were going to beat you on Mario Kart. I mean, how childish is that? So then I went easy on you after that because I thought, yeah, 50 pounds actually a lot of money in this day and age. And then you won anyway and you just got all smug and just went home. Won anyway. Nah. There's always one controller that was awful. You'd always go around your friend's house, wouldn't you? And then you'd always be player two with a stupid controller that would never work. <laughs> yeah. Your character would end up going around and around in circles because like, it was a really cheap controller that the analog stick would always get stuck. A bit like you now. <laughs> <laughs> You're a multiplayer. <laughs> yeah. Because I'd never buy the official one. Player one always had to have the official normal controller, mm -hmm. which looked perfect and it worked well. And like player three or player two, who are, like the last one, would always have the really weird unofficial controller that looks like so the, weird. The really bad uh, Mad Cats controller <laughs> with like the turbo button. <laughs> <laughs> the button, like the most useless button ever. Like, you would never use it. Like the Mad it's, it's like, it's really light for some reason as well. <laughs> like, so but, that's how you know it's bad, it's because it's lighter than the actual controller. But then obviously the PS, PS1 came along, or the Super Nintendo, and that had a four-way port extension, so you could have four friends involved. Yeah. Instead yeah, of just yeah, two. Yeah. But the tellies were still small. Yeah, so, so it was like, it was really annoying. I don't know, they've got it made nah. these black days. And, black and white tellies just play with thousands, people. millions of people alone, yeah. and then you had to have your mate round. Yeah, you bring yeah, your own yeah. joystick. You know, because you always do that if you die, you pass the controller on. You ever do that? We did that, actually, didn't we? Oh, we did, yeah, actually. I forgot you were there.
just last night, I was lost in the jungle with Pitfall Harry, surrounded by giant scorpions and man-eating crocodiles. Well, Harry and I just grabbed the van, swung through the trees, and over the tar pits and found the jungle treasure. It was really neat. If you haven't met Pitfall Harry, you're missing the year's most incredible video game adventure. Pitfall for the Atari 2600 and in television. Since I met Pitfall Harry... No other man will do. Pitfall, designed by David Crane for Activision. Favourite games? Um, man, there's, there's way too many favourite yeah. games, to be honest with you. Porsche Challenge. Uh, <laughs> Porsche Challenge, and it was like the graphics were insane at the time. Like, I was like, oh, it looks so good. <laughs> and you compare it to modern racing games today, it's just, it just looks terrible. <laughs> I want a Dreamcast just so you could do a bit of fishing. What? Never. You can do that on any console. Yeah, but that was like pioneering fishing. D Dizzy Games, which was essentially Codemasters game, and yeah, it was like an Dizzy RPG. Yeah. It was an egg with legs. You yeah. used to solve crimes and enter different worlds, and you had to like pick up the key to go and open this, and then did this. And the best ever music, and there was about 10 different games. It was like Dizzy yeah, and Fantasyland. Yeah, yeah. Dizzy there, Dizzy there, Dizzy there. It was an egg with legs. It worked back then. Do you ever play the Dreamcast? I never really delved into that, no. I think you've missed out actually, because I'd go and get one now actually. Shall I, uh... I wouldn't do it just yet. No. You need to focus on them colours first. And... I'll get back to you on the colour thing, but I'm definitely... Definitely short something, yeah. Mm. I used to watch my brother play Duke Nukem 3D, it was so funny. Um, like, you could actually go into the toilets and, uh, like, pee. <laughs> 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 and, yeah, while killing aliens and stuff. It was really fun. GTA as a, as a young age that was, so... Yeah, that's an early memory actually, the first GTA. What, the one where you burp and fart at people? Yeah, like just having that. That was good, that was. Favourite game, Chucky Egg for the old game. Oh yeah, yeah. Chucky, Chucky Egg was just the noise, a little fella going out picking up all the corn. Simple things. Yeah, simple, simple things. things, yeah, yeah. I didn't, you... I didn't play much of uh, GTA 3, yeah, more but... Vice City. I don't think you lived. Oh. Tomb Raider? <laughs> yeah. Was it like, wasn't the first ever one where she had a swimming pool in her house? No, I don't or something know. like that, and that was all I'd ever do was jump in the swimming pool. <laughs> it's the second one. Second one. <laughs> do you know Time Crisis is still about as well? Is it? Do you ever play that? No. Mm. I want to say Crazy Taxi, but that's because I spent like so much time on it. But I think my favourite ever game would be GTA Vice City. It was just... So good when he came out. Vice City, that was that was Vice the best. Vice City was amazing. Mean. Depends if you like Michael Jackson or not, because I mean there's a lot of that on there, but he doesn't. Wow. It's a bit of an older generation game now, but Silent Hill 2 was a game I played and absolutely adored and I remember most of it because it was just really well crafted. Biggest disappointment is LA Noir's ending. Well don't tell me because I haven't played it. Alright then. Well you can say it, but I don't want to. Well he dies, but then like oh, well. I had yeah. one atta called Attack of the Mutant Camels. I had, I remember one, uh, it was toothpaste tubes shooting at each other, it was stuff like that. It was just like two toothpaste tubes. These games were just like, oh, yeah, they weren't like... <laughs> just, just people at home bored, just yeah. developing games. Well, that's what, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the camel one was just camels spitting lasers at a spaceship, <laughs> and you had to go up and down and shoot them, like on a side-moving screen, so... Camels. With the first PlayStation, you could somehow like chip it, right? And then it would play copy games. Did you ever no. do that? I paid for my games. There should have been some warning on Red Dead Redemption. Oh. You don't want your mum coming in. Do you know what I mean? Like Every time when it's like surrounded in your room. It's, it's unbelievable. It just comes out of nowhere. You know it's coming as well, don't you? You know yeah. it's coming and it's just like your mum will walk in. It's like she's waiting for it. She knows the game. She played it before you did. And she's just straight in, like, oh, uh, what's this? I remember getting a Spectrum as well for Christmas. 1982, see, I remember it that strongly. 
said expect. And I remember, I knew we were getting it because I found it in the loft. Oh. And this is really bad. Every morning before school, I used to go upstairs into the loft and just take it out of the box and just look at it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and then put it back exactly how it was. I don't know why. But what that's the quality memory. What was memory I going to do? Yeah, what was it? Just, just looking at the it. plastic. Yeah, yeah, I could remember the smell. And, <laughs> and it was the same with, um, was it Lost and Damned? From GTA 4? Yeah. You know, don't don't tease it and then just show it. I mean, what's the point in that? You know, that's like that's like watching Babe Station all night and then they actually finally just show you everything. I mean, what's the point? That's why you pay for the private things, isn't it? You don't. But it's gaming. Do you know what I mean, that's that's not Pac-Man. You didn't see Pac-Man whack his bits out. I've had some gaming tragedies. I think everyone's yeah. had gaming tragedies. I've broke joysticks. I've you know, one thing that I've never owned up to to a certain person was that I actually did break your Atari Jaguar. <laughs> I, uh, I was so impressed with Alien vs Predator on the Atari Jaguar, which was brilliant. I took it home, <laughs> I didn't have the correct power adapter for it, so I plugged in something from another thing I had in my room and you got that scale electrics burning smell coming from it. I instantly unplugged it, took it back around to his house within 15 minutes and went, oh actually, you know, I've got homework this weekend, but I actually can't play this. Uh, and then he wondered why it didn't work and it was me. So I essentially broke. If you're watching, I essentially <laughs> broke your Atari jacket. I'm really sorry, but yeah, gaming tragedy. If you don't have an iPhone, you don't have the largest selection of games on any phone. From your favorite classics to the latest and greatest. And you don't have Game Center, where you can find your friends, wherever they are, challenge them to a game, and play head to head to head. Yep, if you don't have an iPhone, well, you don't have an iPhone. Nowadays, I just play FIFA. Like, seriously, I, I think I haven't removed FIFA from my PS3 in easily <laughs> five months. <laughs> like, I just play FIFA. It's weird to say, but we love Black Ops and stuff like that. Yeah. And nowadays, you obviously talk on the microphone and everything to guys. Yeah, we're just having a normal chat, like, how was your day? You're right. Just getting into a game, they're like, oh my god, it's girls. And they're like, make us a sandwich. Show us it. I mean, sometimes it's a bit of a laugh if you're just having a massive argument with people you don't know over a headset. But I think it's better when you've got people in the room that you can, yeah. you know share the experience with. It's not really a, as much fun anymore, I don't think. Like, not multiplayer, I don't think. No. I think it's more of a competition now, like an actual, it's like a sport. Some people are, you know, like there's people that actually make a living selling things on eBay. You know, it's kind of like the yes, same it's thing. it's all about it's... trying to get on top of the leaderboards now, isn't it? I'm a big avid fan of esports, and it's kind of a, this growing thing that's come out of StarCraft mostly, and MOBAs like League of Legends or Dota, where Basically, it's suddenly huge, and it seems to have come out of yesterday. And especially with the Blizzard releasing Heart of the Swarm next month, it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and there's even rumours of pushing for it to be in the Olympics, which would be quite funny to watch 13 Koreans win 12 gold medals. I think the esports scene's a really awesome sort of growing community. Uh, I absolutely adore the sort of uh, respectability it's starting to gain now. It's it's more than just a couple of grubby fat kids in their basement with bad beards playing games. It, it's turning more into a legitimate sort of scene. It's respectable professional people sitting down and playing something that they love. I think it's really awesome there that there are people who um, are skilled at these games and like put the re real effort into playing them and like contributing to the communities. And then there's finally something there for them to start earning money on a fit. Because it used to be something that was done as a hobby and it used to... I just, I'm happy people are being rewarded for like, their dedication to stuff. I think the Olympics in Rio will have online gaming as a, a sport. I love my PlayStation to death. Like, do it's not just about the games as well, it's the fact that... Netflix. Netflix, you've got your BBTI player and all that. Just an internet source. It's brilliant. Yeah, that's good. I would miss looking forward to a game because nowadays you're looking forward to a game on the internet or they'll tell you a release date, they have gameplay footage before it, then they release the game and then you'll play it. 
and of course you have money to, to, to actually buy it. But I miss being a child and mm. you know you didn't have any money to buy anything, you had to like really look forward to Christmas to get something. Yeah. I remember I was... Or your birthday. Yeah, or, or your birthday. <laughs> I miss the sort of amazement I had as a kid when I was playing games. I used to really enjoy exploring levels. Like when I was a kid and there would be a platform and something shiny on top of it that was a collectible or something and I'd, uh, as a kid I'd be amazed and I'd be like wow I found this thing and that used to feel really like I'd achieved something when I like got it. But nowadays it's like I understand why there's things there, I understand level design quite well and like I've worked on games so it's destroyed some of the magic of it for me. So I sort of miss their naivety more than the actual games themselves. The indie scene now is bigger than it's ever been with Jonathan Blow, a one-man developer who made Braid, now being on a Sony conference talking about his new pretentious art title. And the success of Minecraft, I mean, it's a game made by one guy that made $33 million. On my iPhone at the minute, I've got Shark Dash and I play it every night. <laughs> Because it is so addictive, and you're a little shark, and you've got to eat all the ducks in the bath. <laughs> or you can hear. <laughs> yeah, and then they laugh at you, and they're like, <laughs> and it makes me laugh. <laughs> and I'm a little shark, and then you just got to eat them all and collect all the coins and stuff. It's actually quite hard, but it's really fun. And I've got solitaire. It's like solitaire. the class classic games. That one used to be obviously just the decks, and you went to the computers, and I got it on the iPhone. That's so good. That show in the when you're on a train or whatever, you've got a long journey to play a bit of solitaire. I don't play much on my mobile anymore. I occasionally do, like the old spat of Angry Birds or maybe some Crash Bandicoot because I've got that on my phone. But most, most of my mobile gaming is played on this thing, the uh, Vita, where you can just basically have a PS1 in your hand, essentially. Well, PS2 in your hand, actually, now. With magic touch screens and everything. Just playing old Final Fantasy games on a handheld, being able to spend like 90 hours walking around playing an old game that used to be on four discs. I know you can get like Gun Theft Auto and stuff on your phone. It's not the same. But I wouldn't think, you wouldn't be able to play it on such a small screen. Yeah. Quite like to see it big and stuff. They've definitely tried to like compact something too big onto something so small. Can you put cheats in the iPhone game, do you think? I don't think so. Because that's all I really played Gun Theft Auto for was the cheats. I think the future is its quite unknowable. Uh, console gaming, I see like, it's evolving more and more towards it, them basically just being computers. Um, and so the, I, I imagine like the actual Holy Grail will be a system that merges the two ideals. You basically have a personal computer that then has like the same capabilities as the console and vice versa. So it's a, con a PC you put in your living room and sit down and play. Uh, it's got to be GTA 5, isn't it? Yeah. That's... I mean, it was Metal Gear Rising, and I waited like years for it, and it's come out, and I can't even play it now because I've got no time. Yeah, but... I, th I think it always will be Grand Theft Auto, will it? Like, you look forward to Grand Theft Auto 4, and now it's 5. It's a bit strange that it's coming out at the end of the year, though, when the PlayStation 4 is scheduled to come out. Yeah, I don't it's... know if it'll be on that, or... Well, it hasn't been advertised, has it? I mean, it's just pre-ordering for 360 and PlayStation 3. So, I don't know. I think really the future is in the hand of the small developers rather than the Goliaths like EA and Activision. Well, 21st century gaming. Spending a few hours playing video games never hurt anyone, right? Well, think again. Waka 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 waka. Pack food. You can hear it. Booga booga. Yeah. Half naked men throwing each other about and me killing loads of pixelated people and anything that I could. I've come a long way. You go strangle someone, 
Lily would slap him and I pushed him down the stairs. So I dragged his body up the stairs to try hide it. You were like, poison the donuts, I poison the donuts. I try not to kill them. I think Sims is actually a really educational game. I think you can really find a lot about yourself out when, when, when you play that game. I love the Sims, okay? <laughs> Too much. Still play it today. You have no I life. Like I found out that I was actually a very sadistic person. There's nothing better, there's, there's no better way to spend your time than you know, getting a couple of people, putting them in a room, taking the door away and letting them either get starved to death or they kill themselves by setting fire to the place. That is hard. It Do kind of shows who you are though, like, so you'll be like a loving family, but I'm there trying to kill them all. It just makes you want to do it even more, doesn't it? Not just because you want to kill somebody, but because you want to outsmart the system. I'm good at Tetris because I can put loads of stuff in the car boot. You learnt that from Tetris. And I learnt so that te from Tetris. Tetris. Game Boys have taught us a lot, you know, like stay out of tall grass, you might come across a rat tat. <laughs> <laughs> How to put stuff in car yeah, boots, you know? Yeah, once you went to Ikea, put the slap back. Yeah, that's a good show in car. Yeah. 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 It's definitely a learning experience. If you play GTA, I mean, what's, you know, you're going around killing prostitutes, and now you're, now you're moaning the... Dif different ball game.